One of the first YouTube videos I saw when I started wood turning was Trees and Clay and his wood turning a wooden goblet video. And considering it now has over 18 million views, it's safe to say many of you have seen it too. I think his technique is so excellent and his goblet turned out really nice. Ever since I saw that video, I have wanted to try it myself. There is however one thing Trees and Clay's video doesn't show and I'll try to demonstrate that in my take on turning a wooden goblet. Let's get started. I start by shaping the outside of the chimney. I'm not quite sure of the shape yet, but I'm looking for a more oval, wine glass shape rather than the traditional goblet shape that trees and clay made. I realized I made the chimney too narrow and I would never be able to hollow it out. I'll have to adjust. Once I'm happy with the outer shape of the chimney and bowl, I can start hollowing. I see most wood turners use a scraper tool with one rounded side for this. I wish I had one, as I'm always struggling to use the bowl gouge on these narrow bowls, especially getting the bottom round and smooth. If you have any suggestions, please leave a comment. I did find a trick for this though, as you'll see in a bit. I'm not sure you can see it, but the bottom have these ripples in it. My hand won't fit to sand the bottom properly, so I came up with a rather unusual solution. I have this finger belt sander that might do the trick. It fits nicely and actually does a great job smoothing out the bottom of the bowl. A part of me feels like this is cheating. But until my technique for shaping the bottom of tight bowls improves, it'll have to do. Much better. Before shaping the epicure and stem of the goblet, I make a support for the rim so I can still use the tailstock when shaping. I knew it was a good idea to keep all those leftover pieces from previous projects. Now it's important that it's a tight fit so you don't get vibrations, 
but there should not be any outward pressure on the chimney. There should not be too much pressure towards the headstock either, as it might put strain on the stem as it gets thinner. I want to take a moment to thank everyone for watching, commenting and liking my videos. I enjoy sharing my projects with all of you and this YouTube channel has truly become part of my hobby now. I would love to expand and further develop the channel and would appreciate your support to do so. I have made some merchandise and stickers you can buy from my store if you would like to support the channel. The link is in the description. Again, thank you all for watching and supporting. And now for my favorite part of this project, shaping the stem and base, removing all that material and seeing how thin I dare to make it.
The goblet is almost finished, and this is where Trees and Clay's video was missing something. When I first wanted to try this project, I couldn't see how he finished the underside of the base. It seems he used a parting tool and sanded it by hand. I always want to finish the underside of my projects on the lathe so that the finish is perfectly round and clean. This is how I achieved that on this project. I'm glad I finally got around to doing my take on the wooden goblet. I hope you enjoyed this project and follow me for the next one.